Hey guys, I'm Jake. I have a really easy tutorial on how to set up in-app purchases within your Unity game. But before we get into that, I just launched my game Crosswalk Droid, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. You can download it in the description and let me know what you think in the comment section on this video. Um, but besides that, let's get into this tutorial. So everything in this tutorial is actually based on Unity's own tutorial for in-app purchases. However, I've simplified it quite a bit. So if we go in to our editor, you can see this scene that I've put together. It's just a simple 2D game. All it is is a blank panel with a color on it and then four buttons and then one for restoring purchases. You only need to worry about restoring purchases if you're using non-consumables for iOS. Otherwise, just forget it. But we're gonna incorporate it for this tutorial. So, quickly, you can see in our scene here that we have these four buttons and all, and they don't actually do anything yet. None of the buttons have any functionality. And that's what we want. Like I said before, this tutorial is based on the one Unity put out, and they had a sample script that uh, they gave with it. I've actually modified it a little bit, making it a lot easier to read and a lot easier to work with. And I'll have a link to that in the description as well. You're gonna need that, and it comes with two scripts. It comes with this in-app purchase manager, and it also comes with this restore purchase script. You're gonna need both of them. So the link for that will be in the description. But before we start with any of that, we need to actually enable in-app purchases. So what you need to do is you need to go to Window, General, and then down to Services. There it is, okay. And once you get here, you just wanna to go to the in-app purchasing and just um, click into it and then just turn it on. So then it'll ask you to import. I've already imported it, but um, just make sure you click on the import button and that'll import everything you need. We need to do one more thing before we start actually editing the code. And we just need to create an empty game object and we're gonna call it IAP Manager. And what you wanna do is you wanna take the IAP Manager script and just attach it to this blank game object. And that's it. So now we're gonna start working on some code. So when you first open up the IAP manager script, this is what it looks like. And the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna start creating our products. Now, if you go back here, you can see that I want an in-app purchase for removing ads, buying 100 coins, and buying 500 coins, okay? These two are gonna be consumable. This one is a one-time purchase or a non-consumable purchase, okay? So, first we need to create our products. So we're gonna type out private string and we're gonna call this one remove ads and it's going to equal a string which we're gonna call remove underscore ads. And then we just wanna do this two more times for the other um, types. So we'll do private string and we're gonna call this one coin 100 and that's gonna equal a string call this coin underscore 100 and then just one more time for coin shoot, my bad, 500 and we'll just coin underscore 500 okay so that's the first step we're just creating our products that we want the next part we need to go down here right under step two, I made this really easy, it's in a four step plan, step one, two, three, and four. So in step two, we just need to, it says, choose if your product is consumable or non-consumable. So we, we know that our remove ads, we want it to be a non-consumable. So how do we create this? Well, we'll type in builder dot add product, parentheses, and this is where we take these and put them in here, okay? So we'll say remove ads and then a comma and then product type and we're gonna say non-consumable, okay? So that set up the remove ads as a non-consumable um, product, okay? So and then we just wanna do this two more times, but instead of saying non-consumable, we'll say consumable. So let's do that. So builder dot add product, and like that. This time we'll do coin 100, and we'll say it is a product type of a con 
consumable this time. And then I'm just going to copy this and then just change this to say 500, just for simplicity. Okay, so that's the first two steps done already. Pretty sick. Now for step three, we're going to want a method that'll allow us to purchase these items. Um, each one needs its own method. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say these need to be public and we're going to call them or we're gonna call this one buy, remove, ads. Oh, my bad, void. <laughs> it's a public void, buy, remove, ads, okay? And all we're gonna to wanna to say in it is buy product ID, and then we're just gonna pass it the remove ads, and that's it. So all we're doing is calling them the method by product ID, which is a method down here, which just, you don't need to worry about that. And we're just passing it what we want to actually purchase, okay? So, we just need to do that two more times. And we're gonna do this public void by, um, let's just say coin 100. There are no parameters needed. We'll just say by product ID. Coin 100, and then just copy this because I'm just going to change 100 to 500. So if we change that, we'll just change that over to 500 and change this one over to 500 as well. So that's the first three steps done. So step four, we're going to be editing the purchase processing result method. And basically, what this does is if the purchase was to go through, then we want to look at what type went through, right? So if you purchased or remove ads and the purchase went through, we want to reward the player for that. So the way that we do that is we have this set up and we just want to replace the quotation marks with remove ads. So now it'll this argument will only be true if the purchase for remove ads went through. So this debug statement doesn't make any sense. This is where you would put your code for removing ads. I don't actually have any ads in it, so I'm just going to write a debug statement just so you guys can see when we get to it um, in the editor. So I'm just going to say remove ads successful. Okay? But now we need to add two more of these statements for the other two types of in app purchases. So we're going to just copy this whole statement and then we'll just paste it below. But we want to say else if and that's the only difference we just want an else if statement and then we just change remove ads to coin 100 and then right here we'll say give the player 100 coins okay and then just copy this one we'll paste it one more time and then just change it to coin 500, and then we get 500 coins. Okay, well, let's go back to the editor real quick, and we're gonna need to create a way for these buttons to interact with that script. So we're gonna make a new C sharp, <laughs> C -sharp script, and we're gonna call this um, purchase button. Why not? Okay, let's edit, let's open that up to edit it, and I don't think we need any of this. Let's just delete it. I don't think we need the start method or the update method. But what we are going to want to do is create an enum. So let's do that. Let's make um, let's make a public enum, and let's call this purchase type. Okay. We just want to make the three different types that we have, and so. For this example, we will do move ads and then coin 100 and coin 500, okay? And then we just want to make a public purchase type. So we're going to take that enum we want uh, and we're going to call it, I guess, just a lowercase purchase type. <laughs> Why not? For simplicity, you can name them whatever you want. 
So now we'll add the code for the button. So we'll just make this a public void and we'll call it click purchase button. And inside of this, we're just gonna want a switch statement. And the switch will be based on the purchase type, okay? So that's actually gonna be this that we've created. So purchase type. And the first case will be purchase type dot remove ads. And then we'll just continue with coin 100. And then, yeah, purchase type dot coin 500. Okay. And then inside this, all we're going to want to do, we're going to go um, IAP manager dot instance. And then we're going to say, because this is remove ads, we're going to say, by remove ads, because we want to call that method to, to work if that's what we're wanting to pick. And then we just want to continue this with the IAP manager dot instance dot buy 100 or coin 100 in this example. And then the only other one in this script is the IAP manager dot instance. No, my bad instance and dot buy coin 500 okay so save that script and then you don't need these so i'll just delete them but save that script and that's all we're going to need for that so jumping back into the unity editor we just need to give some functionality to these buttons so we want to go and make sure that we've selected our button right and in this case we're going to start with the remove ads and we just want to drag our purchase button script onto it. And then we just want to make sure that the purchase type reflects the type or the button that we want to use. So in this case, remove ads. So that all works. And then we just want to add something to the button and we want to drag over our remove ads. And then we just want to go to our purchase button script and then we want to click on click purchase button. And then we just want to repeat this for the other two items. So if we go to um, coin 100 and we drag our purchase button onto it, you just want to select coin 100 and then we want to add itself onto it and then go to purchase button and click purchase button and we'll do that one more time go to purchase button change it to coin 500 this time add and drag coin 500 and then go down to the purchase button and click purchase button so those are all of our buttons but we just need to do one more for our restore purchases. So let's click on restore purchases. And this one, we just wanna drag a restore purchase script onto it and then just add some functionality to it. Once again, drag the restore onto it. And then we wanna to go to restore purchases. And then we wanna do, let's see, where is it? Click restore purchase button, okay? And then all of that should be good. Okay, so we have our IAP manager with its script IAP manager on it, and we have all of our buttons with all their functionality now. So if we were to test it, we should see, yes, um, this is just showing us that the IAP is working. So if we clear that, and we were to click on remove ads, you will see that we get our message remove ads successful. Great. If we were to clear that, just make it easy to read clicked on 100, give the player 100 coins. We clicked on 500, give the player 500 coins. And then the restore purchases, it fails right now, but that's because um, we're not on the supported platform. You actually have to be on iOS for that to work. And, but the functionality should all be working in that. So in part two, we'll connect everything that we've done in this tutorial to the App Store Connect and the Google Play Console. So subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on part two. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one.